Who doesn't want to be awesome at the net like this? Well, in this video, we're going to take you through three different forehand net shots you can play and how to play them. So, David, take us through the fundamentals of a good forehand singles net shot. Well, I want to look at three things first, and that's movement, grip and racket position. Because once we've got these three perfected, we can actually play all three shots from the exact same position. So, movement. We're actually going to look at three different types of movement to get to the net. But all of them start with a split drop and end with a lunge. It's how we move between the split drop and the lunge that is going to vary. I'm going to take you through all three. So number one, the sachet. It starts with a split drop and then our racket leg leads whilst our non-racket leg catches up with our racket leg but never overtakes it. Something like this. Number two, the cross behind. Once again, we're starting with a split drop and our racket leg leads. However, this time our non-racket leg comes behind us, pushes off hard into a lunge. Something like this. Number three, the running step. Once again, we're starting with our split drop this time, however, the non-racket leg leads and then pushes off hard so the racket leg can lunge. A lot of people tend to prefer this one because it replicates what we do every day, walking. So hopefully something like this. So those are the three movements you could use. What I'd recommend is go out and try them out for yourself and see which ones work best for you. So David, grip. It's not just as simple as having a forehand grip. Tell us more. Yeah, and just to go over the forehand grip again, we're holding the racket as so, and it's like shaking someone's hand. So we're shaking the grip. What you're looking for is a V pointing straight up the racket uh, with your thumb slightly on the side and nice loose fingers. But yeah, there's a bit more than just having a forehand grip, particularly with net, because it's a soft controlled shot. So grip strength is actually probably one of the biggest things that people get wrong. Um, you've got to think of, you are a lot, just like we spoke about, we've, you've got lots of movement going in. There's a force going towards the net and you've got to counter that force because we now need to control this shuttle softly to go over the net, which means all through the grip, we have to be super, super loose. Um, we're talking two out of 10 when we, when we contact the shuttle to absorb that force and control the shuttle over the net. Finally, racket position. This is the final bit that we're going to look at. Now, racket position is really important for getting the shuttle over the net. What we often see with net shots that don't go over is a very level racket position or even slightly pointing backwards, and that will just cause the shuttle to go straight up. So what we're looking for is the hand above the racket head. Once I've got this hand above the head, as you can see, the, the face is now slightly pointing over the net, and it's going to gently guide that shuttle over the net. So David, we've covered footwork, grip and racket position. Are these the same for every shot that we're approaching on the forehand net? Yeah, and that's why we started with them because if you can nail that, that movement, the grip and that racket position, so head below the hand, all the shots you play from the forehand court will be from that exact position. And the amazing thing is that adds an element of deception to it as well. Because if you're approaching from the same position every time, your opponent just isn't going to know what shot you're going to hit. So the first shot we're going to talk about is the forehand into out net shot. This is how we're going to play it. I want you to approach the exact same way we've spoken about with the racket head below the hand, your nice forehand grip and the same movement. Now, as we go to hit the shuttle, I want you to feel like this racket head moves gently towards the post. It's only a small movement, but it gets that little bit of spin on the shuttle, which makes it very difficult for your opponent to return. Okay, and so David, how high over the net do you want to be playing these net shots? And where do you want them to lay on the other side? Where are we aiming? Yeah, and with net shots, I do want them to be tight. I don't want my opponent to be able to kill that net shot off, but I'm not aiming for that net cord every time. It's unrealistic. All I'm gonna do is make lots of errors. 
So what I'm aiming for is probably about an inch above the net with some spin, it's gonna make it really hard for my opponent to return the shuttle. And in regards to how close to the net am I gonna try and get the shuttle? I do want it quite close. I want to make my opponent move as far as possible and especially cause them to hit a really high steep lift so I can just finish it off. Okay, so David, what are the two biggest problems we're seeing with people playing forehand net shots? Yeah, I think number one is just trying to generate way too much spin. What we see is just this really aggressive movement of the racket head outwards, trying to really spin the shuttle massively. When actually you've got so much momentum going forwards anyway, all it has to be is this slight movement to generate enough spin to cause your opponent problems. And the second one is just trying to play way too tight and just creating way too many errors. We don't need to get this perfect net shot every time. It's, if you get a net cord, it's actually just, just a bit fortunate really. So we're aiming for that just inch above the net. If you get the tumble, fantastic. If not, you're still gonna hit a good enough net shot to cause a lot of problems for your opponent. So the next shot we're gonna talk about is the out to in spin net shot. This is gonna be played very similarly to the in to out net shot. The only difference is instead of pushing our racket head towards the post, we're gonna bring it slightly across towards the center of the court. What this shot allows us to do is generate a lot more spin on the shuttle. You'll also find this shot a lot easier to play from straight on, as if you've just hit a straight attacking shot and you're following it up, versus coming from the center of the court. Once again, I'm not trying to generate loads of spin by a really aggressive racket movement. I'm just slightly bringing it across to the middle and it's getting lots of spin. So two common mistakes we often see with this shot. Number one is not actually finishing the shot by coming underneath the shuttle. So what people end up doing is sort of poking it into court too much because they don't come underneath the shuttle to generate that spin and get it softly going over the net. And number two is just starting way too far out wide. So it's very, very obvious what they're doing and it's quite hard to control. Like most net shots, we don't need much movement here. So we're just starting slightly to one side of the shuttle and then coming in gently underneath it. Okay, so we've covered the two straight shots on the net. What about the cross? Yeah, and the cross is a fantastic shot to maneuver your opponent. Now I want you to think about the straight net shot because we're gonna be looking like we're playing this. So you're gonna set up exactly the same, head below the hand, soft forehand grip, and the same movement in. Now, we've got the same setup, so how do we actually play the shot? Well, from this position, as that shuttle is about to contact the racket, I want a short, sharp action, changing this racket face from upwards to cross. The big thing here is we're not flipping the hand. What we see here is often inconsistent contact, the shuttle flying up, flying out. We want to maintain that racket face pointing the direction we're gonna hit this shuttle. And finally, probably one of the biggest mistakes I also see is that margin for error. What we often see the pros play is these really tight net shots to just skim across the net, but we don't need to aim there because the idea isn't to win the point on this shot, it's to maneuver your opponent. So just finding that, about a foot away from the net is a perfect landing zone for this cross net shot. So David, I'd like to bring tactics into the discussion here because I see a lot of players playing the cross because it's more fun, because they enjoy playing it. Like when would we be playing the cross over the straight? Yeah, and, and the cross net shot is a great fun shot. And actually for a lot of juniors, it's often a clean winner. So we, we often overplay at a young age, but there has to be a tactical element of, to it. Otherwise we really get ourselves out of position because we're playing cross, we open up massive gaps on our side of the court. So when are we gonna play it? Well, I want you to imagine there has to be a space there. We've always got to play into space. We always got to keep our opponent on the move. So if there's no space there, the straight net shot is perfectly fine. If there's a space, that's when you can open it up using the cross net. Okay, so just to round up, we've covered three different types of footwork that you can use to get to your forehand net. We've looked at the setup for forehand net and two shots you can use for straight net and one for cross net. We've also covered common mistakes that we're seeing when people are playing forehand net. But David, just one final question. What advice would you give everyone who wants to go away and improve their forehand net? Probably the biggest thing I push with my players is if you're looking to practice technique, this sort of static net shots is fine. But as soon as that technique's good, move away from that as much as possible because it's so unreal unrealistic compared to a game 
when again you're moving fast and having to take that pace off the shuttle around the net to control it and that's such a massive factor when you're playing a net shot you want to be doing as much practice of that as possible. Couldn't agree more. Always make sure your practice is relevant. OK, so thank you very much for taking the time to watch the Bampton Stones video on forehand net. As always, if you like this video and the content, please hit the like and subscribe button and then head over Instagram and give us a follow.